Welcome to this Blackpool Music School video all about the ukulele. In this video I'll be showing you the strums that George Formby used during the song Leaning on a Lamp Post. I am tuned G, C, E, A, but any tuning is fine, any size of ukulele is fine. We are talking about our strumming hand, in my case, my right. If you're a left-handed -hand strummer, the, the techniques are the same, you're just using the opposite hand. So. Let's get started. I will be staying on a C chord, that's all I'm using here. Now, if you know that song, it starts off at a very slow pace. We will be counting this four beats to the bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, you can strum this with your thumb. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think George used his thumb, I personally would use my first finger, you know, to one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that's that I'm leaning on a lamp, maybe you think I look a tramp bit, until the song clicks into a bit more of an upbeat pace. Now if you strum with your nail, you'll hear... It's a more strident sound, more noisier, shall we say. But if you strum with the pad of your thumb, it's a lot softer. So the choice is really up to you, but I am counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Four beats to the bar, so one bar will be one, two, three. Like I've said in previous videos, that's the same count whether you're going really slow. One, two, three, four, or really fast. One, two, three, four. It's the same strum. That's rhythm. The speed you perform that at is tempo. So I'm guessing George probably does it about this speed. In on a lamp. One, two. And I am just letting my hand fall through over the first finger. And that goes on for several bars. Now, when it comes to the double time bit, we are still counting one, two, three, four, but we are putting an and in between. So it's one and two and three and four and or one and two and three and four and so that one two three four is still counted like this one two three four but you're putting an and in the gaps in between one and two and three and four and that is still the same as counting it one and two just adding the extra notes in. Now, you will also notice that the song quickens up in tempo as well. So the first part starts off very sedate, very slowly. I think it's meant to be like strolling through the park, you know, one, two, three, When it kicks into the faster pace, it's one and two and three and four. And... So again, the first part is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. When it speeds up, it is one and two and three. And... Now this can happen with music. It can sound faster, but played at the same tempo. So if I were to strum like, I'm going to use my first finger because I find that easier to use. But if you use your thumb, that's fine. If you count one, two, three, four, then one and two and three and four and, the ands fit in the gaps. So I'm still counting one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and. But if I put them in, one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and the 
fact that you're adding more notes makes it sound like it's faster, but it may actually not be much faster. It might be an illusion because you're hearing extra notes and it pushes the song along in speed. So I'm going to strum one, two, three, four. I'd like you to strum at home. When I'm saying the numbers, you should be strumming down and the gaps in between, you should be putting another stroke in. So I'll, I will be strumming this one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and you should be strumming one and two and three and four and or one and two and three and four and whether you use your finger or your thumb makes no difference as long as you can do it that's all that matters now so I'll do that again so after the count of four one two three four one two three four again one two three four again one two three four again one two three four so when i say the numbers you should be strumming down but the gaps in between the numbers you should be putting an extra downstroke in, and you will hear it sounds faster even though we are counting at the same speed because there's more notes it's like a trick for your brain it sounds like it's much faster than it is because you hear the percussive beat okay so that's some basics of the strum he'd be doing when singing of course when singing doing the solo he'd be doing the split stroke the fan stroke and other stuff like that there is a couple more things i will point out george occasionally threw an upstroke in on the last beat of the bar so he might be doing this we're going to be counting one and two and three and four and on the and of four we're strumming up on all the others we're strumming down so again it's one and two and three and four and at speed Now, when, when did George Formby use that? I'm not 100% sure. It probably changed on every record and every performance. He probably flew it in, threw it in. Please excuse me, first day with a new mouth. Let me know who first coined that phrase in the comments down below. So, you don't have to do it. He probably did it now and again or when he felt like it or when the mood struck him. So, we'll cover that now, the upstroke. You're strumming down on the one and two do it with your thumb one and two and three and four and one and three. you can do it like that if you wish I am a finger player mainly that's why I don't use my thumb a great deal but if you use your thumb it's fine as long as you can do it that's fine so the first to cover to recap what we've done the first part of the song you can just strum one two three four that slow pace think leisurely floating down the river in a boat when it gets the second time round and it picks picks up just stay at that speed just add the gap just add another stroke in one I do know it goes faster for the solo, we'll come on to that in another video, but we are talking the bit when he is singing. So, in the first part, you will be counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So one bar is one, two, three, four. When it goes into double time, you're strumming down on the one and two and three. One bar in double time is one and two and three and four and. Again, one bar in, in the opening bit, one, two, three, four. 
One bar in the speeded up bit or double time bit. One and two and three and four and. The variation is an upstroke on the and of four. One and two and three and four and. And that would have been what he did. He may have thrown in a finger shake which is that, which I've got a video, I'll post a link to all the George Formby videos at the end of this. A, a triplet he may have thrown in as well. If he did that, I am not 100% sure, but a triplet is one. So if you're doing that, so we're going to move back to the beginning, he could have thrown in triplet two. In the opening section, the triplet would last the same length of time as that. So you'd be counting one, two, three, four. If you put a triplet in, it would be triplet two, three, four, triplet two, three, four. So that triplet takes up the same space in time as a downstroke in the beginning. Triplet two. If you're talking in the double time bit, that triplet takes up the space of one and. Triplet two, that, excuse me, triplet two and three and four and. Triplet two and three and four and. So that triplet takes up the same space as one and. You're just putting an extra note in that gap. I can put the triplet in, though I'm not 100% if George Formby used them in that song. So, that's the difference between the vocal, the singing bits where George strummed compared to the split stroke. The split stroke I'll do in another video, but this is for the singing bit. So, there are two things you need to remember. The first part is counted one, two, three, four. The second part in double time is one and two variation is an upstroke on the and of four. One and two and three and four and. And they are probably the two strums he probably used the most in the singing part of leaning on a lamp. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Black Pill Music Skill for more videos. The more thumbs up we get and the more subscribers we get, the more videos we will post. So until next time, take care, keep practicing, keep playing, and as always, goodbye.